Hello, chemistry students. In this podcast, I'm going to explain to you all about percent yield. Let's start with an example, and then we'll use that to explain what's going on. A student reacts Mg with HCl and expects to collect 5.8 grams of H2 gas, but only collects 4.2 grams of H2 gas. What was the percent yield? There's a formula that you need to know, and in fact, you need to memorize this formula and it is percent yield equals experimental divided by theoretical times 100. Please be very careful because this formula looks an awful lot like percent error, but it's not the same. Remember, in percent error, we take the theoretical minus the experimental absolute value, and then we divide by the theoretical. That gives us a percent error. This is not the same thing. So don't use that formula, and be careful you don't confuse percent yield with percent error. Now in this particular example, the student actually collected 4.2 grams. That was the experimental value. The student expected to collect 5.8 grams. That's the theoretical value. So what they actually got divided by what they thought they were supposed to get is how you set this up. So if you take 4.2 divided by 5.8, and then multiply that by 100, you're going to get 72.4137, and it keeps on going. That means that we're going to have to round off to significant digits. Now notice this is a division problem, so we're going to use the smallest number of digits in the problem, which is 2. So we need to round this off to two significant figures, so therefore, my correct answer is 72% yield. Let's take a look at another example that's a little bit more complex. A student reacts 2.6 grams of Mg with HCl and gets 0.15 grams of H2 gas. What is the percent yield? OK, so we have the uh, experimental amount given, right? It's right here. We, we've got. 0.15 grams of H2, that's how much was produced in the experiment. What we're missing is the theoretical. So that means we've got to calculate that using some stoichiometry. So the first thing we're going to need is a balanced chemical equation. So the student reacted magnesium, Mg, with hydrochloric acid. Now the products are going to be hydrogen gas, and magnesium chloride MgCl2. You'll be given the equations that you need to solve these problems. You might have to do some balancing. So if we're going to balance the equation, we need to put a 2 in front of the HCl. Magnesium was 2.6 grams. We need to figure out what we would call a theoretical yield. If we start with 2.6 grams of magnesium and it all reacts and we don't have any error and we collect everything, how much hydrogen gas would we expect to make? That's our theoretical yield. So we're going to need to do a little bit of stoichiometry here. So we're going to take 2.6 grams of magnesium and then we're going to solve for grams of hydrogen gas. So that means we need to change grams to moles. The mass of magnesium is 24.31 grams in one mole. Now we're going to use our mole ratio to go from moles of magnesium to moles of hydrogen. Notice I put my moles of magnesium on the bottom and my moles of hydrogen on the top. In this particular case, it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio. There's a 1 in front of H2, and there's a 1 in front of magnesium. So now my grams of magnesium have canceled. 
my moles of magnesium have also canceled. Now I still need to convert this into grams. One mole of hydrogen, H2, has a mass of 2.02 grams. So now the moles of hydrogen have canceled. I just have to do a little bit of math. So I'm going to take 2.6, multiply that by 2.02, .02, and then I'm going to divide that by 24.31. I've got to round off to two significant digits, so I get 0.22 grams of hydrogen. That's my theoretical yield. That's how much I would expect to get if it all reacts and I collect it all and I don't have any experimental error. Now, did that actually happen? No, I only got 0.15 grams, so I want to figure out my percent yield. So I'm going to take the amount that I actually produced in the lab. My experimental amount was 0.15 grams. I expected to get 0.22 grams, that's my theoretical yield, and I'm going to multiply that by 100 to make it a percent. Also notice I only have two significant figures so I'm going to round my final answer off also to two significant digits. So when you put all that into your calculator, you're going to get 68% as your percent yield. So that's how you do a percent yield problem. We'll see you in class and be ready to do some practicing students.